I'd like to call the meeting to order. For those that care to, please stand for an opening prayer and a salute the flag. If you would, Mr. Cameron, please. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, I just pray for this country. I pray for this, this city. I pray for all that we do and all that we say. And I just pray for your favor and your direction and all that we do and say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic which stands and stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Cameron, and thank you everybody for being here tonight. <coughs> All righty, first up is the Mayor's Announcement, Appointments and Votes. We have a proclamation for Meals on Wheels. Whereas March 2017, 2017 marks the 52nd anniversary of the amendment of the Older American Act signed into law on March 22nd, 1972 by President Richard Nixon, and whereas Meals on Wheels provides homebound seniors with nutritious meals, a friendly visit, and a safety check, and whereas volunteer meal deliverers may be one of the only people the seniors see during the course of their day, and Meals on Wheels plays a very important role in ensuring seniors can continue to live independently in their homes, and whereas the goal this month is to raise awareness of and request support for homebound seniors who depend on the services of Meals on Wheels providers, and whereas our city is proud to recognize the many contributions of Meals on Wheels and its volunteers to the community. Now, therefore, I, Daniel Harder, Mayor of the City of Republic, Missouri, encourage all residents to take part in supporting this organization and do hereby proclaim March 2017 as Meals on Wheels Month. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and affixed the seal of the City of Republic this 21st day of March A.D. 2017. And here to accept this is Michelle Henry from the Meals on Wheels program. Your organization does. Their chief wants to get a picture here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to say really quick, we served 1,732 meals to home homebound people in the month of February, Fantastic. and we absolutely could not do it without a wonderful kitchen staff and the volunteer drivers that do it. We have six that are hardcore de dedicated to doing that, and we're always looking for more drivers. More volunteers. So, thank very you. good. And thank you very much thank for all you do. Oh, and another announcement. Do you have a birthday card? Miss mm -hmm. Connie Muller is having her birthday is March 31st. Connie, are you in there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please come out, Connie, and, and wave. We'll wave happy birthday to you. <laughs> she's coming the long way around, or she's going the back way. I don't know for sure. <laughs> she just left the building. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Connie. Smile at the camera. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had some more good news today. Um, I did get an email today from the National Council for the home from the Home Safety and Security. We have been we are on the list of the top 50 safest cities in Missouri. We probably did make the top 50 list this year. So I'd like to thank the staff for all they do for for helping us to maintain our our safety here in town, uh, especially uh, Chief Lawton and uh, Chief Compton for all the stuff that you guys do and all your staff. And I want to thank the council support for uh, these safety programs also. Over the years, over the last few years, we've been on council. We did adopt the um, eight cent sales tax for fire uh, equipment that we've been putting in service. So uh, that supports our firefighters. <coughs> we've also installed car cams, body cameras. We've purchased rifles for the, for the police department, new vehicles that uh, came out of reserve. So um, thank you uh, council and thank you staff for, for helping us make this uh, one of the 50 safest, safest cities in Missouri. I would also like to thank the Commonwealth for the recent article by James Hansen on the uh, Republic's pro-development movement, and a big thank, to, thank you to Garrett Tyson and his staff for all the diligent work they did on, uh, on this um, pro-development movement. The word is getting out that the uh, Republic's moving forward and we are open business, so thank you, Mr. Tyson, for all the work you guys have done. And with that, no public hearing on the citizen participation. 
Anyone here wishing to speak about anything not on the agenda, please step forward and give us your best three minutes. Anything not on the agenda. When you come forward, please sign your name. I've already done that. Okay. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Linda Kelly. I own a home in Ward 1, Highland Meadows Edition, and I've been here in Republic for 13 years. I bought the house as new construction at 2833 East Marshall. I'm here to urge the city to develop housing codes. Without this, neighborhoods will lose their value. I've spoken and met with the city about this before. I know that a program was developed using a best practices framework from another like city during the last administration. I know because I received a copy of it. It wasn't implemented and moreover, it wasn't openly discussed before the city or its citizens. I've personally been involved with code development in other cities and would like to see what can be done to have a neighborhood that I'm proud to live in. I work hard to maintain my property and I would like to stay in my home. But to do so, I need the support of the city to sustain my home's value. Not only its financial value, but my quality of life. For example, my almost new house is surrounded by household trash. Open garbage bins litter the street. Gar cars, trucks, and trailers are parked in yards or parked on the wrong direction in the street. My next door neighbor mows his lawn only by city request. The hidden backyard weeds get over knee high and trash gets thrown into it. It's disgusting, it's unhealthy, and breeds allergies, mold, and vermin. Another example, there was a utility trailer that sat parked on my street for over three months, loaded with household goods that included a freezer. I called the city several times, and it wasn't until a few weeks ago that it was moved. Current code mentions abandonment of airtight containers to be illegal, but apparently it couldn't get resolved because the trailer sat on the street. Can we just live with that? I don't want to. And yet another example, it took walking at night for me to understand that street light maintenance isn't done regularly. I found out that burned out lights need to be called in by residents. I called for five, I called for five street lights to be replaced in January within just a few blocks of my house. And I believe that one street light is directly in front of a council member's house. What does that say about my representation and safety in my neighborhood? A solution using neighborhood associations is a non-starter. From past experience, I know neighborhood associations only work when houses are occupied by owners or when distant owners are obligated by code to comply. My neighborhood continues to suffer from rentals. Buyers looking for rentals are encouraged when they see rundown neighborhoods. So Republic, why not develop community participation with ongoing communication from its city officials? How about a city pride awareness program with prizes given to those who participate? Or a monthly coffee with the mayor and chief of police? How about working with Lowe's and Walmart and other contractors for discounts on mold products and cleanup? The citizens of Republic should know that a citywide cleanup commitment is coming. As a council, you're not here just to promote your own businesses or to draw a new business to town. It's simple. The city can't draw a new business here without visibly safe, clean neighborhoods and a good quality of life. My question is, have you taken a good look around your neighborhood lately? How do you think it looks? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, and we will have, uh, we have written down these issues that you brought up, and we will have a code compliance officer come out and investigate your area, okay? I get support from code compliance officers, okay. but it's the codes that are the problem. Okay. And, uh, or a lack of Hang on a second. And Mr. Brock, uh, uh, are you here, Mr. Brock? Or David? Um, the lights. That's that's Empire. Is that correct? Correct. Empire. So so the reason we call the you call the city and let them know about the lights is we have to call Empire because we don't we don't maintain those the street lights. 
Okay, okay, so. I mean, I think the city should know, people in the city should know that they, it's up to them to call it. Okay. And one other thing I would like to bring up, and uh, if you'll see it in your um, newsletter, in your, in your monthly newsletter coming out this next, next month, uh, we are having a citywide cleanup in April. Uh, we hope that everybody participates in that. So uh, please, uh, there's going to be an insert in the uh, newsletter, I believe, that's going to have uh, all the information for that citywide cleanup. So please, everybody, everybody take advantage of that while it's here. And this is our first citywide cleanup we've ever done. So we are moving towards that direction, and we certainly appreciate you coming in and, and voicing your opinion. It just needs to be ongoing. Oh, yeah. But this, are, this is our first one. This is our first go at it, and, and uh, I, I don't doubt it's going to be very successful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you want to address Mr. Mr. Cameron? Yeah, what I wanted to elaborate is being a newcomer to the community, if I could es establish one thing that was communicated to this council, was the community, there needed to be a concerted <coughs> effort to clean up the community. So while we're working on the, the, the citywide cleanup, it is the first time for the city. I can assure you that it is an effort, it is an issue, because once we start this issue, it even further establishes for code enforcement to go to those areas. This is kind of a once and an opportunity to allow people work with different groups, with churches, different people to go out and assist to help clean up those properties uh, with Lowe's and different places. This has been done in other locations. But it is important. We do need to take pride in our community and clean it up because the one thing about it is we need to get out there and do that. There's another project that's coming up that we're working with the high school. They're cleaning up on the highways. And so I think we need to do a better job. We just had a meeting before this meeting talking about gateway signage to the community. We need to create our own branding, our own identity, and things of that nature, but cleaning it up is one of them. And, and as I drive around town as well, it's very noteworthy that we need to clean it up. So thank you for your comments, and I, I think it goes along the line with the, the direction that we're taking with the city. So thank I you. I appreciate it. And thank you again, Ms. Kelly. Anyone else wishing to speak about anything not on the agenda, please step forward and give us your best three minutes. Anything not on the agenda? Seeing none, citizen participation is closed. I need a motion and a second for the approval of the consent agenda. Motion. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? That motion carries 6-0. On to board commissions and committee schedule. Board of Adjustments, April 6th. Capital Improvement, Improvement Committee. March 22nd, City Council meeting April 4th and the 18th, Planning and Zoning Commission April 10th. <coughs> On the old business and table, table items, I need a motion and a second for the second reading of Bill Number 17-11. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries 6-0. <coughs> An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, authorizing the City Administrator of the City of Republic, Missouri to enter into an agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission and the Missouri Transportation Finance Corporation for a direct loan and to execute a promissory note with the Missouri Transportation Finance Corporation for the Hines and Oakwood Transportation Improvement. Thank you, Brenda. I need a motion and a second for the final passage of Bill Number 17-11. Motion. I have a motion and a second, and we have Mr. Brock with the overview. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, as the time implies, this uh, will finance the city's out-of-pocket expenses for our Hines and Oakwood transportation improvements. Uh, the amount of the loan, the principal for loans, $669,779. Uh, this will be a 10-year note at 3% uh, interest rate, 3.01. Uh, in addition to uh, the city's uh, out-of-pocket cost project also includes revenues uh, 75000 from a, a development contribution and $1.9 million in federal highway funds. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Any questions for Mr. Brock from Council? No questions at all. Very good. Seeing no questions, roll call vote. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Councilmember Poole? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Councilmember Brashear? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Self? Aye. On to new business. I need a motion and a second for the first reading of Bill Number 17 12. Motion. 
Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries 6 0. In ordinance of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, amending Chapter 130, Republic City Code Municipal Court, Article 1, General Provisions, Section 130.040, Term of Office, by revising the date of appointment. Thank you, Brenda. Mr. Derrickson. Yes. Uh, with the recent change to two tonight meetings, that has thrown off the schedule for appointments that's set up in the ordinance for judges. Judges are appointed for a two-year term at the uh, every even year, and so usually uh, when we were meeting the second and third or second and fourth <coughs> Monday, uh, we would be past the April election, and the incoming mayor could make the appointment at that first meeting. With the change to a uh, Tuesday night meeting that has thrown that off, so this amendment is to adjust that so that the appointment is still at the first meeting after the uh, individuals take office, and uh, but it gives it flexibility so that we're not tied to specific, the specific dates that were in the ordinance originally. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Derrickson on this particular bill? A little housekeeping? Yep. Very good. No questions? This is a first read. If you do have any questions, please direct those to Mr. Derrickson. I need a motion and a second for the first reading of Bill Number 17-13. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? And that motion carries 6-0. In ordinance of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, amending Chapter 520, Fences and Walls of the City of Republic's Municipal Code of Ordinances, in order to correct errors and to clarify certain requirements therein. Thank you, Brenda, and welcome, Mr. Tyson. Thank you. Uh, the City of Republic began regulating the construction of fences in 2009. Uh, I began working here about a year and a half before that only, but uh, to my knowledge, fence, fences were not an existential threat to our community. Uh, after we adopted these regulations, however, we have spent a tremendous amount of staff time and have imposed uh, quite a bit of cost on the community as well to regulate something that was not a huge issue. Uh, as the saying goes, trying to kill an ant with a sledgehammer. So this bill is designed to scale that back a bit. Uh, for staff to not be spending as much time regulating something that tends not to be a major threat to the community uh, and also to uh, preserve uh, some more reasonableness, if, if I can say it that way, to these regulations. So uh, to run down the list of what this does, it, it, uh, if you're going to replace a lawfully existing fence that already conforms with our regulations, please just replace it. Uh, no need for a permit, and this, so this bill will remove the requirement for you to come and pay us $50 just to confirm that, yeah, your fence is still fine and it's just like everybody else's. Uh, no need for that. Uh, it will remove some defined terms that are not actually used in those regulations. Uh, it will clarify what's required when you want to build a fence that's in excess of six feet. Uh, as it is currently, you would have to go get a structural engineer to design the construction of that fence, uh, of that fence uh, because wind loads can be a problem. Uh, but the wind loads are what they are and the design is the same every time. Uh, so we're just going to provide some specifications rather than making each person that wants to do this go and hire a structural engineer to come up with the same thing. Uh, it will also clarify uh, the location of fences with regard to water meters and public sidewalks to make sure that the water meters stay accessible uh, and that fences are not located any closer than 12 inches to a public sidewalk. Uh, and then lastly, uh, it will codify something that we've been practicing for a long time now uh, informally, which is to require people to install access gates if they are going to completely cut off a portion of their private property by the installation of a fence. If you put in a fence and then leave some of your property then inaccessible to you, the only way to access that portion to maintain that area 
is to trespass on somebody else's property. So in order to prevent that situation, we will be requiring an access gate. Uh, it's not been required before, and in those instances where we weren't able to persuade them to install the gate, what we end up with usually are <coughs> nuisance issues on the other side of that fence because it's inaccessible to mow and to maintain. Thank you, Mr. Sox. I do have a, do have a question on the, the gate uh, requirement. Um, so, so now you're going to require an access gate where you can get in there, but if they lock the access gate, we're back to square one. Sure. It's, well, it's, it's only meant for them to utilize. It would not be utilized by anyone other than them. Okay. So if they want to lock it, that's perfectly fine okay. for security or safety reasons, as long as uh, they have some reasonable method of accessing whatever they have cut off from, the, okay. from themselves. Yep. Okay. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Tyson? Raise your hand and be recognized. I did notice that uh, on the back of the Exhibit A, um, uh, front yard and front half is 48 inches tall. Uh, commercial is 12 feet. Rear yard and rear half of side yard is an, is an 8 feet tall fence and 12 feet of commercial, correct? That's correct, and that's not being changed. That's that is changed. how the regulations have been okay. since 2009. Right. Another housekeeping issue, and thank you for catching, catching that. Any questions for Mr. Tyson? This is the first read. If you do hear uh, any uh, questions out in, in the public, uh, please bring those reports to Mr. Tyson, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Let me get caught up here with my marking. I need a motion to second for the first reading of Bill Number 17-14. Motion. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Any abstentions? Motion carries 6 0. An ordinance of the City Council <coughs> of the City of Republic, Missouri, amending the <coughs> Municipal Code of the City of Republic, Missouri, Chapter 215, Article 5, Offenses Concerning Public Peace, by enacting new sections 215.282.1 through 215.282.12, which shall be known as the Noise Control Code. Thank you, Brenda. Mr. Cameron, by building this one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you recall, back in July upon my arrival, uh, one of the uh, issues or that I was asked to look into or to address is to look at the uh, city's nuisance ordinance uh, related to noise issues or complaints uh, around the community. And so based upon that time, uh, we worked on an ordinance, the staff and myself, um, kind of looking at it, admittedly looking at the ordinance uh, that was on the books, it was a bit, uh, I'd say it's vague, even though it's a state statute, it's, it's based upon state statute, it's almost identical, in fact it is. And so adding some more clarity to that specific ordinance was kind of the objective. And so between Garrett, myself, uh, Jared, uh, police chief, we worked on different forms of language trying to craft a new ordinance in and of itself. Um, admittedly, getting involved in that ordinance uh, was extremely complicated, uh, and making sure that you're staying in line with the First Amendment rights and things of that nature, the things that we discussed in the work session in and of itself. And so in January, this council authorized uh, myself to engage uh, a law firm out of, of Kansas City, uh, Stinson Leonard, to uh, evaluate this and draft for us an ordinance. Uh, that was uh, consistent or at least compatible with other communities that had faced similar situations and so what is before you and what has been presented and what staff is recommending for your consideration is this ordinance that has been drafted with their input and so uh, again one thing that I want to also communicate is in front of you inside attachment F as I promised there are all the com all the emails or communications that we would receive or suggested edits that were received will be provided to the council. There's also an additional uh, supplement that is not inside that packet that is that is for your review as well that can be considered in this reading or even in the second reading um, in two weeks. But um, anyway, that is uh, I'll, I'll entertain any questions. But really, it's kind of falling in line with the, the presentation I made a, a couple weeks ago and what you've had. But again, this is basically the result of the. Uh, product that the outside council provided to the staff, to the council. So I'll entertain any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. 
Council, if you have any questions for Mr. Cameron, please raise your hand and be recognized. Councilmember Jones. Um, Dave, could you go into detail about enforcement or what, what constitutes a violation? Because I know there's multiple levels that have to be achieved. So could you go into that first? What, what would constitute a violation? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could speak to like, I'd probably have to delve into what the enforcement side would be, but it'd be kind of like you'd have to consider uh, the same situation you would be with any enforcement situation with the code enforcement or the police officers deal with at this stage. I mean, I think it'd be uh, you go out, evaluate it, look at the scenario, um, investigate the situation to decide whether or not a violation has been incurred or if it's a recurring violation. I mean, it's like in the situations that we have now, I mean, not every time we issue a citation, sometimes we issue a warning. And that would be the protocol in the same situation. You'd go out there, and if it's a reoccurring situation that you got the same thing over and over again, similar to this lady that, that spoke tonight, if it's not gone by tomorrow and it's there the next day, you keep asking. You could issue only so many warnings before you would need to go to the enforcement level. The enforcement is probably your last, your last line of action. Right. I, I'm talking specifically about... Um, so just looking at sections, let's see, section C under 215, 282.4. We'll get back to A. But C, talking about the measured at least more than five decibels above ambient noise. Well, that, I'm a little confused about that with regard to how, how that applies to the <coughs> decimal table in Section A. So the way it's explained in the, in the workshop, the way I understand it, is that in order for it to be classified as a violation, it had to be higher than the table, but also at least more than five decibels over the ambient noise, if the ambient noise is already over the level in the table. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure that's clear as far as, I mean, it, it became more clear as it was described at the workshop, but I don't know that it's clear in the ordinance. Or maybe I'm just really slow. Table in section A. Um, after having done some research on different decibel levels set in in towns that are similar in size to, to Republic, find them to be they're, they're not all over the board, but these are significantly lower than some. Johnson City, Johnson City, Tennessee, daytime decibel level is 75 in residential area, residential zone. We've got 60. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. And Councilmember Jones, what I, what I would say is even in that, like what we, what we provided, and even as I mentioned in the work session, it w was a range, it, it is still subject to this council and any adjustments to those. So what we provided is what our council provided to us, provided to that, because it could range from any one of those. So it, it is subject to this council amending those numbers, and, I, and, and certainly that's up to the council's pleasure to entertain an amendment to those, to those decibel readings. Uh, as well, because those are some of the comments that I know that that I received. Okay, I want to say it was Brian. Yeah, from Mr. Penny. Okay. Sorry, but that that was included in this packet as well. That answer your question. Do you have any more, Mr. Captain Johnson? I don't have any more questions. Now, now with regard to 
the the proposed additions. Those are uh, the amendments that would those any of those would require a motion to amend yep, to add right. any of those. It, yeah. So that there would what would need what would be needed is a motion to amend the death. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I jump in oh, there? Yeah. I, I, I think you've probably seen in the past, a lot of times I'll prepare a memo if a council member is considering asking for a, uh, an amendment to a proposed ordinance. I will, if you will contact me, I will prepare that amendment so that it's in the packet at the next meeting so that it can be made. And uh, if we get enough amendments pursuant to our charter, it says that if it's if there are substantial amendments, then then a matter gets bumped over at least one meeting after those amendments. Uh, and we also have a procedure for doing a substitute council bill if there are a lot of amendments. Uh, maybe they're not substantial, but because of the number, we might want to do a clean version of that with those amendments in it. So it just depends on how many there are. It may be a simple one-page memo, or it could be a substitute council bill that addresses several changes. So, okay. whatever council's pleasure is, I'll be happy to work with you on on any proposed amendments. <clears throat> so, just to, to make sure I'm clear on it, any any of the proposed considerations that have been submitted from from anyone from this packet, those need to be done in a formal manner. I think it would be fast because there. Uh, I think a okay. council member needs to. Well, a council member is going to have to make the motion to right. amend it. So, if, if we got five council members that want to tweak it here, I'd have five memos here with each one of them proposed, and you just go down the line, either voting to approve them or not approve them. Okay. And then, as as amended, that's what the council would then uh, vote on at the second reading. That <coughs> answer your question, Mr. Jones. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so those amendments could be made between now and the second reading. Yes, if someone, if if you want to make an amendment, just let me know and I'll type it up, let you look at it, make sure I'm understanding what you want. And okay. <clears throat> so anything tonight, you wouldn't necessarily. If, if you just had a minor one, you could. But if you had major changes, I'd propose doing it by a memo so that you track it, track it well. Okay. So it's your call if you'd like to make that amendment. Yeah, if it's or if it's like major to, to publish an amendment. Well, there's you know, I've, I've got a what would be considered a probably a relatively minor amendment in adding some verbiage that just call for traceability to the NIST search sure. is. Very common with any equipment that deals with calibration, um, so I'd consider that a, a minor. Is that the one you had in your email? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that. We could do it tonight, or I could prepare a memo pointing out. It was in four or five sections, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And <coughs> just uh, identify those in a memo and, and present that at the next council meeting. That's that's fine. The other one would be not quite so insignificant. If we did decide to go with the, with decibel levels, because I just these these levels are uh, far too low, as far from what I can see. So I will make make that formal. Okay. <coughs> now, on that, all you'd be doing is just basically. Setting different decimal limits on, of those <coughs> six categories there. Yes. Just be proposing. Okay. Yes. That should be simple enough. Okay. Put in a memo. Okay. Uh, are you okay with that, Councilmember Jones? Yes, I am. Very good. Very good. Any other questions for Mr. Cameron? Please raise your hand and be recognized. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Cameron. T time adjustments would need to be the same way. Yeah. If there's yeah, changes in time, times, yeah. that would need to be adjusted as well. Say more to that. What do you mean, time adjustment? Well, there's uh, 7 a.m. to uh, 9, you got 9 p.m. Yes. And 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Oh, if, if somebody wanted to tweak those, yes. it would be done. Yes, yeah. I mean, that would be the same thing because that was one of the yes. considerations that's that's in the, the, the comments as well. Right. Okay. Back to my page here. 
there's no other questions or comments for Mr. Cameron. This is the first read. If you do have any other questions, please direct them to Mr. Cameron. And again, uh, if you have any uh, changes you would like to make amendments, please get those in memo form to Mr. Derrickson. Okay. Yep. Okay. On to other business. <coughs> Resolution number 17-R-21, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, authorizing the Police Department to apply for two reimbursable 2017-2018 Missouri Highway Safety Program for Traffic Safety Grants. Yeah, I need a motion to second. Motion. Second. I have a motion to second. Chief Block. Good evening. I'll make it as quick. I know we've got a long agenda here. Uh, these two grants that we'd be applying for this year are through the Missouri Highway Safety Program grants. Uh, we would be applying for this, the uh, time period of 2017-2018. We did apply for these same grants last year um, and received them. Not the full amount we applied for, but we did receive them. The previous year to that, so the 2015-2016 uh, year, we did not uh, apply or we n were not approved but prior to that we did so I want to kind of explain the process here that um, we want to get into a regular routine of applying for these two grants they are focused on traffic safety and DWI and sobriety checkpoints that's a focus that we want to do moving forward we're asking uh, the state for seven thousand dollar grant related to hazardous driving enforcement and that's specifically a random patrol by officers on overtime salary where they focus on nothing but uh, traffic hazard hazardous movements of vehicles and then the second one is uh, sobriety checkpoints and DWI enforcement, which we kind of talked about last time, our involvement in the DWI task force. This would provide funds, $12,000, uh, over the next year for us to be able to send officers to other DWI checkpoints as well as run our own DWI checkpoints. So we're asking for uh, approval from the council to apply for these two grants for a total of 19000 I just want to say right up front, I do not expect to get that full amount uh, when we apply. Um, in the last two years, uh, in, well, the full year of 2014-15, we spent uh, just over 7000 in, in DWI grant money and another uh, $3,000 in the hazardous moving. So, you know, I doubt they're going to give us the 7 and 12, but uh, they'll certainly, I believe, give us some. And I'm open to any questions at all that you have. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for Chief Lott? We had a lot of comments, by the way, on that uh, traffic the, the monitor, traffic monitor for speed. Oh, good. A lot of good comments on good. that. Good, yeah, I think it's been successful, and we're going to try and expand that in the future. Okay. Any questions on this particular um, resolution for Chief Lock? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any, any abstentions? Motion carries 6 0. If I uh, would like to thank you again. Uh, we said this earlier, but I would like to thank you guys again for keeping safety in the forefront here. Uh, that's what helps make, make the public one of the top 50 safety cities in the city in the state of Missouri. Thank you. I, I do want to remind uh, Brenda that uh, unfortunately, due to the time frames of this, we need to get the paperwork signed for this grant tonight by all the council members. So if I could just make sure that Brenda gets a hold of you before you leave, I appreciate oh, it. Oh, that's going to Thank you much. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the price, I'll pay it. And <laughs> careful. Take around after the meeting. <laughs> careful. All right. <clears throat> resolution number 17-R-22, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, awarding a bid for residential water meters and associated electronic radio transmitters. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. I got a motion and a second. Welcome back, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this was a sealed bid process for water meters expected to be bought uh, for the upcoming year. I was solicited three vendors, received two bids, and are asking to uh, split the award uh, so as to allow uh, award to the uh, uh, lowest uh, low bid in each case. Uh, for the Hershey Bronze Meter, uh, award to the Springfield Wind Water unit price of $94.81. And for the uh, ITRON 100W ERT, that's, an that's the electronic radio transmitting device, award to Midwest Meter, and a price of $80 a piece. Uh, with the money we have uh, budgeted and available, then we would expect uh, to be able to provide meters for approximately 100 
seven uh, new single family or duplexes, uh, 40 expected dead meters, and then uh, really the, the primary purpose for the bulk purchase here, uh, do 441 old meter replacements. Uh, purchase of the uh, electronic radio transmitters would be done immediately. The water meters, however, would, uh, would be spread out over the course of the year. Thank you, Ms. Brock. And these are uh, what we currently use these meters. And <coughs> it is. Okay, very good. Any questions for Mr. Brock, Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Cameron. I want to ask you, David, sorry. Did you know me and the electronic meters just. So, what, how long are these things lasting? I mean, are we getting 10 years out of them on the remote reads? Uh, it, it's hard to say because they, we've changed models. Uh, we've got 60 W uh, units out there that are probably approaching seven or eight years. And that's really the oldest we have in the inventory. Uh, they, we are still turning in 60 W and getting warranty replacements. Uh, they've got a prorated to pay, uh, replacement. I think after seven years, you get a 50% discount off of a, a 100 W. I'm with you. I'll just keep asking you what the rate of return on them bad boys are. But what is our water loss? That's the second question. How much are we losing in water uh, loss? I think for 2016 we came in at about 18 percent, 19 percent, and and a significant portion of that we think are uh, uh, old meters that are reading slow and, and under recording the actual uses that are out there. Which and that's what makes the our, our meter replacement so uh, important because that's. It's, it's lost revenue. It's lost water, but it's really lost revenue. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Brock? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? And that motion carries 6 0. <coughs> On the resolution number 17 R 23, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, awarding the bid for the production of a fireworks show at the City of Republic's 21st annual Have a Blast patriotic celebration scheduled for June 30th, 2017 at J.R. Martin Park. I need a motion and a second. Motion, oh, second. I have a motion and a second. Welcome, Ms. Mayfield. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. We recently concluded the sealed bid process for uh, the firework display at the 2017 Have a Blast Patriotic Celebration scheduled for Friday, June 30th. Um, for this particular bid process, uh, the companies were provided with a few specifications and our budgeted amount for fireworks um, when they received the invitation for bid document. And then we're asked to provide us with a proposal meeting those specifications and that dollar amount. Uh, the budgeted amount in 2017 for fireworks is $16,000. I did send this out to three companies. We received two proposals, uh, one from AM Pyrotechnics out of Buffalo, Missouri, and one from Premier Pyrotechnics out of Richland, Missouri. Um, and then one of the biggest factors to consider when comparing these two proposals that we did receive, which should be on your um, document that you have, is shell count and shell size. Those two things make your show bigger and better depending on the size of the shell and how many you have in the show. I did calculate the total number of shells and shell size for both proposals. <coughs> and you can see those there. Um, looking at that table, AM Pyrotechnics did um, far exceed Premier Pyrotechnics in a uh, number of shells and the higher um, inch shells, which are, are your better shells for the show. Um, they also, AM Pyrotechnics, plans to introduce seven inch shells to the show this year, which is something new. We've never had um, shells that big in our fireworks display. Total shell count, AM Pyrotechnics is 1,826. Um, Premier Pyrotechnics, 1,159. And then the total cost for uh, the firework, fireworks display from both companies is also on this document here. AM Pyrotechnics submitted a proposal with total cost of $15,857.39. Um, they did note on their uh, submittal that that show is actually valued at over $17,000. So they've discounted it a little bit for us. And then for P Premier Pyrotechnics came in at $16,015.27. Um, 
and they did put 16,000 on their bid submittal, so I assume they're we're planning to take off that $15 there for us. Um, in consideration of these proposals received and previous work history, I would recommend that AM Pyrotechnics be awarded the bid for the fireworks display uh, for the 2017 Have a Blast Patriotic Celebration. Um, we've worked with AM Pyrotechnics for approximately eight years. I worked alongside Aaron, who was with AM Pyrotechnics last year. Um, he's great to work with. He made a lot of last-minute adjustments and changes for us when we had new ideas and bigger things that we wanted to do. Um, so I would recommend that we uh, move in that direction with AM Pyrotechnics. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Mayfield. Mm -hmm. um, again, you said again, AM Pyrotechnics did this last year. Yes. Is this going <coughs> to, excuse me, be actually more sales than they did last year? Do you have that comparison? Do you remember? I don't, but we did increase our, increase our budget by $1,000, I believe, this year. Okay. So right. I think they've turned out. That was your first event you attended, wasn't it? I thought they did an outstanding job. Yeah, they did great. That was just for me. It was, it was pretty <laughs> stupid. I've already, been asked, I've already been asked who's going to do who, if, what band is going to be there again. I've been asked that already. So members I know only. You guys are members only again? Yes. Right on. Very good. <laughs> so we'll get that advertised. <laughs> Any questions for Miss Mayfield? Do we need to put that in the, in the resolution? Uh, to we go on. Yes. For AM Pyrotechnics? Yes. Okay, so we need to make that. Make a motion to amend that by inserting AM Pyrotechnics. Okay. So I would need a motion to amend uh, this resolution to add AM Pyrotechnics to this resolution. Motion. I have a motion. I have a second. Discussion. All in favor for the motion of adding AM Pyrotechnics? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries. Any more discussion? Any more questions for it? Don't run off. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion points for Miss Mayfield watching there? Don't let her get away that easy. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I think you said that your favorite last year was the large board multi shot with the angle fire red peony, wasn't that it? You said that was your favorite? <laughs> I just dug the people jumping on an airplane with <laughs> the flag attached to it. Yeah. There's no other questions? I would. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Mayfield. Yeah. On to resolution number 17 R 24. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, authorizing payment to Missouri Rural Services Workers Compensation Insurance Trust for coverage for 2017-2018. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Who's that? Good evening. Good evening. The City's Workers Compensation <coughs> Insurance Policy does expire March 31st. The renewal policy period is April 1. Uh, the new policy period will be April 1, 2017 through March 31st of 2018. Uh, Steve Whiteman from Arthur J. Gallagher, who is our broker representative, has been gracious enough <laughs> to join us this evening. Um, he's going to give a brief overview regarding the bids that were received. Um, he's also going to explain that our premium is actually lower this year than it was last year. And then he'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm one of the brokers for the city, um, and this is specifically regarding the workers' compensation insurance. Um, our company, we did go out to bid for the city of Republic, and we got about six bids. Um, your current carrier is Missouri Rural Services, and they did a fantastic job as far as the, the premium that they provided um, on their bid. We went to the the renewal premium for Missouri Rural is about 166,000. The next closest bid was 231, and then it went up from there. Um, we got a couple of people that just declined coverage. You just didn't quite fit in the wheelhouse, but it was, it's always great to market the city. Um, your attention to loss control is definitely noted by um, by the carriers that we get to quote from. Uh, one thing I did want to say that's not in just regards to premium is the claims year over year. So, on average, you do about 85,000. Is over a five-year span, but you do about eighty-five thousand dollars worth of losses year over year. This last year, it's been about eight thousand, so it, that's incredible. So hats off to your employees and your department heads and things. So congratulations. That year, having it so low, that's going to financially benefit the city for for years. So congratulations there. 
Um, so again, we are recommending that you move forward with the quote from Missouri Rural. They've been a good partner for you all. And uh, again, as we went to the marketplace, that's our that would be our recommendation. So, anyone have any questions? Question. Yes, Mr. Uh So with that banner year of low losses, our experience mod still changed from 1.0 to 1.04. It did. So when they take into they take into effect five years. So your right. five year total losses is, is still just slightly higher than last year. But you have a bad year that's going to roll off. So unfortunately, 2014 wasn't a great year. Um, so you just have to wait a few years for that to, to lower. I do expect next year for your mod to go down below below a one. What is our deductible? Uh, there's no deductible. No deductible. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great question. Though. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you got the floor. <laughs> you go. 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 <laughs> So how many how many companies do you represent as far as are in the, in the brokerage rate? Right. So how many are in that house? So we thing? marketed to six. I know you said six, but like, is there was that the all only six that? That's the top player. So we specialize in public sector. So that's all I do. All I do is cities and schools. Um, so we actually when. We have people coming to us asking to bid your insurance. We, of course, go to our uh, people that we trust. So we have our own group of people. You know, they have to meet certain criteria to make sure that they, you know, can adequately supply the, the correct insurances and things. But, no, we went out. This six would cover a, a good gamut of everyone. So uh, Missouri Rural is a, what we call a trust, or it's an insurance pool. So you share risk. We're big advocates of that. Midwest Public Risk, uh, they actually have your liability and property lines. They're another pool, so their comp, their work comp is just not quite as competitive. MEM, um, that is a company. They are um, just an insurance company. The one, the one that has our general liability and stuff, mm -hmm. would they have given us a discount on that if we had brought the work comp over? Uh, that's including the discount, that's so that you do get a 10% discount. Okay. Yes, but the 231, that does take into effect the discount. Great question, also. Like you're in the big. You're going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going fine. What's your day job? <laughs> uh, I, I think it might be a typo, but um, it says that the policy expires on March 31st, and then our renewal is April 1st. Shouldn't those renewal and expiration be the same date? It, it should. Yes. Should April 1st is the. Okay. Is your ex-date. Right. Just want to make sure. Don't want a day out there with no coverage. Oh, absolutely. That no, that would be bad. Yeah. So that's all I have. That's it? That's all I've got. Wasn't that many pages. We, we can come back to you. Just keep, keep going through there. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from Cal? And, and thank you, Mr. Self. Those are very good questions. Thank you very much. Anything else from Council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. One thing I, I will do for with staff is with Connie and her safety committee team, she's the head of that, I would commend Connie Muller on the work that she does. And trust me, I, it's nonstop and it's routine that I get a, an email from her with their inspections, their investigations, their, their walkthroughs, and with your help mm -hmm. going through our facilities looking for uh, areas of opportunity. And then uh, I get to help draft a letter to say we need to address those areas of opportunity. But I appreciate the fact that Connie's on top of this, and, uh, and she takes it very seriously. She does an outstanding job. And uh, it's not necessarily how that landed in her purview, uh, and on top of having to deal with me every day, that's pretty an out outstanding job. So I want to commend Connie and her team for, for getting that done. So I agree. Kind of a lot of attention to detail. Council member stuff. That does bring up a good question. So is there anything that we're missing that we could get additional discounts on? No, really. I mean, not from a premium standpoint. Um, your first dollar, so it really doesn't do much if you had, let's just say, you took on the first 50000 retention, something like that. Uh, there's additional cost savings, but for the city this size, we think it makes you know it, a big difference. Um, really just loss control. So however much input you put up on loss control, that's going to make sure that your premium decreases year over year. That, from a financial standpoint, keeping your losses low, that's the number one thing you can do. And of course, it's safety for your employees and it makes for a, you know, a good, just good city overall. What's the, it had a bunch of, what's the actual coverage amount? Uh, for the work comp? So it's statutory, so there is no limit. No limit? Yep, okay. it's just, okay. all right. yeah, it can go as high as it needs to be. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, any other questions for him? It was Whiteman, is that correct? Whiteman, yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Whiteman or Miss Addington? She disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions, counsel? Thank you much. Uh, seeing no questions, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries 6 0. On to resolution number 17 R 25, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri, approving a policy concerning the public private economic development partnerships for infrastructure construction. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Welcome back, Mr. Tyson. Thank you. I'd like to apologize for what may have been some curt and facetious remarks about our fence regulations earlier. I should have disclosed that I wrote those. So all snide remarks <laughs> are directed toward myself. <laughs> Just wanted to be clear about that. Uh, this resolution proposes a policy to guide staff uh, and to guide procedure when it comes to establishing public-private partnerships for economic <coughs> development, particularly those partnerships that involve uh, the expenditure of city resources for infrastructure uh, in order to facilitate more development, more physical development here in the city. Uh, the council's recent uh, engagement in this sort of thing with the Garden Business Park is a good example. And in fact, uh, the process we went through to bring that to council has sort of served as a template for this policy that we're bringing you here this evening. Uh, that process that we followed there, in addition to some review of other municipalities' economic development policies and procedures, have informed what is before you right now. Uh, what it does is it gives staff a track to run on in terms of how to negotiate uh, those potential partnerships and what steps to follow in terms of making sure that council is aware and appropriately involved in those negotiations uh, and in making those decisions. Uh, I believe it adds uh, a measure of accountability that I think is very appropriate when we're talking about uh, the expenditure of substantial city resources. I also believe it contributes uh, very appropriately to requiring transparency uh, from staff, both to the council and to the community. Uh, so you can see, and, and I won't spend a lot of time going uh, through here, uh, what all is required, but it's basically a, a due diligence process on the part of, of staff and council uh, just to make sure that we are doing our homework uh, and that we're being held accountable to do our homework to make sure that uh, these sort of partnerships are actually going to uh, have a high probability of ending up in the best interest of the community. Uh, so uh, the, the one additional comment uh, that I will make is this is now the second council meeting, I think, in a row where I've brought a new policy for uh, council to consider for approval by resolution. And it's so it always is a concern, and it's been a concern of mine in, in, in drafting this and presenting it. Is the question is, is this red tape? Is this going to put up boundaries that are too restrictive? Uh, is something I am concerned about? I would say this, this registers just a little bit on the uh, red tape Richter scale, so to speak. Uh, but I think these boundaries are very healthy, very appropriate, and uh, I, I do think when you have a situation like we had with Garden Business Park, where you're doing the right thing and uh, in it, the procedure is working well and it ends well, and you know that you may be in that situation perhaps again and again over the next several years, that it's good to go ahead and institutionalize that procedure uh, and set up some of those boundaries formally uh, by adopting a policy like this. will be well received, I just might just imagine. Any questions for Mr. Tyson? No questions. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I've got a comment. Um, ideally, we'd love to have had this in place probably before we did the Garden Business Park project and probably before we did Heart of America and things of that nature. So I appreciate the work, again, that, that uh, Garrett is doing, and again, back to your pro-development article that recently came out. I think we're making a concerted effort to do these things, but I think that it's, we've got to be very cautious, and I think Garrett is doing a good job of helping myself and the council with, with the process for the best way to get that done, because everyone can come out and say, hey, we want the same deal. And not every one of those deals is going to be in the best interest of the City of Republic and for the growth and development of it. So I think having a vetting process, something like this, that you're a part of, that you're still getting to see the return on investment, how it benefits the community is an ideal way and a, a part of building, even part of our mission, vision, and values and establishing trust 
with just not only accountable with the community. So I commend you again on another great job of putting together a document <coughs> that you. works. So as long as it's not red tape and we miss some opportunity, then I'll blame you for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just have no doubt. <laughs> Keep that off a minute. <laughs> Think you can do that for me. You gotta run the tape backwards too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Again, any questions for Mr. Tyson? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? And that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. On to resolution number 17 R 26, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic, Missouri. Awarding a bid for the 2017 citywide cleanup and authorizing the execution of a contract agreement. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Welcome back, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, April 22nd, we have a citywide cleanup plan. The, the primary feature of that event is a curbside collection of both waste and white goods. Uh, also, that day, we'll have uh, e waste collection site, recycling. A collection event at Miller Park, our yard waste disposal site, and availability for disposal of household hazardous waste at the Springfield Collection Center. For the uh, curbside collection, we solicited bids from uh, all the uh, trash contractors that we could locate in the area. That was a, uh, 12, uh, 12 potential contractors. However, we received only one bid. Uh, that bid was from Allied Services, LLC, uh, doing business as Republic Services of the Ozarks. The bid format, uh, we had a unit price for uh, per ton for bulk waste collected at the curb. Uh, we had uh, tipping fees for a secondary collection, a second roundup if we need to pick up sites that were mixed. Uh, that was a unit price per cubic yard. And then we also had a flat fee mobilization cost allow the contractor uh, to uh, uh, recover their labor and equipment startup costs. Uh, the estimated price using uh, our low bidder Republic Services for the event for the curbside collection, 15520 That is a, a bit over our, uh, budget our budget number. We have 10000 budgeted. Uh, this is the first event that we're having this year, so no one really had a track record on uh, what to expect. Uh, uh, we do think that we can find the additional uh, 5520 in the general fund budget over the course of the year if necessary. Street budget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Very good. And uh, this is the flyer that's going to be in the newsletter, is that correct? It is. Uh, you have a flyer here. Uh, this is a, one of the several uh, public relations efforts that will be going out. Uh, Chris Snyder with Republic Services is also here tonight. If anyone have any, has any specific questions on the operation. I, di I did have uh, one question from a uh, citizen when I was talking about this. Um, uh, we have shredding services. I mean, that was one question he asked was shredding. We have a paper bin at uh, Miller Park. However, it won't be shredded until it is transported back to Mark okay. Street. So, so it will be shredded after the, the collection, correct? Right? <coughs> and your name was again, sir? Chris Snyder, Chris Republic Snyder. Services. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Chris, so doing this a number of times, <laughs> historically, the first week everybody will get it out there and somebody says, oops, I didn't know. I put it out there and said, oh, yep, I put it out there. You just missed it. Is there, a, is included in your fee, is there a, is there another, is there any additional provision for that? Is there gonna, and that trust, I've done this so many times where you can go, you, it was out there, you just missed it. <laughs> You're very correct. Um, we handle many municipalities in the area, and we've done many cleanups. We do the curbside cleanup, Nixa, Ozark. Um, so it kind of, we know how what it takes. And, so that's um, included in this. Yep. Okay. That can, the, uh, there's an additional cost for if we go back and pick somebody up, that's included in the bid there um, that has that pricing in there. We, uh, when we plan these events, we, have, we do have a little bit of leakage that comes over that somebody puts out towards the end of the day thinking it's their normal trash time um, that we will be by. But when we do this, we bring, we'll be bringing 12 trucks here. Um, we'll have 20 to 30 employees, uh, generally run two people per truck, as well as what we'll do is um, 
we'll have supervisors running the streets looking for those issues where somebody sets it out behind the truck <coughs> so we can come back and pick it up that day. We want to get your city clean by the end of the day and we want it to look nice at the end of the day and not have any anything holding over on the weekend. So we'll work hard and diligently to make sure that everything is picked up and cleaned up by the end of the day. And uh, there could be a few, hopefully not, but there might be a few, but Very we good. work. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Any questions for uh, David Brock or Mr. Snyder? Council Member Self. Um, I see you talking about the event flyer, but like, do you plan on putting that in the water bill, or like, like, where are you gonna? I'll defer to our PR expert, Ms. Connie Muller, whose birthday happens to be March 31st. He's taking the long way around again, so <laughs> I think we need to get banners. So, I mean, we, for a birthday? No. Oh, yeah. We can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I will be copying each starting tomorrow morning, so they'll be ready to go out with it. Okay. So we'll go out with this month's Is there anything else we're doing for it? Uh-huh. Yeah. We're going to be doing social media. We'll be doing press releases. Uh, we'll be contacting, hopefully, the school, see if they can send it out in the time talk. Uh, we'll also send out to the chamber, uh, through the chamber. But this will not be eligible for businesses, but hopefully they can send by the rest of and then we've got some targeted outreach for folks with, uh, associated with our community. Code compliance. We'll be sending letters to them as well. It sounds like a well thought out process. And thanks for putting your time in on that. And thank you for bringing this forward. I think it's going to be a big thing. Any other questions for Ms. Muller or Mr. Snyder or Mr. Brock? Seeing that, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? And that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brock. We hope to see On to resolution number 17-27, resolution of the City Council of the City of Republic of Missouri to approve the purchase of one new police patrol vehicle. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Have that motion and a second. Can I get a second, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Oh, Mr. Jones, thank All right. you. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second. Welcome back. I, uh, usually I like to be in front of the council. This is one I don't like to be in front of the council with, but it is a realization of our job. Uh, back on January 26th, uh, one of our 2016 Ford Explorer utility vehicles was involved in a collision after a pursuit from Republic into the city of Springfield, actually out of the I-44 Glenstone area. Uh, at the end of that pursuit, the, uh, the suspect vehicle crashed and spun around and uh, hit our uh, 2016 Ford Explorer head-on. Luckily, no serious injuries from the collision, um, but obviously it did some significant damage to our car. And in fact, after two months of working with the insurance company and all, um, it is totaled. So um, we are in a bind, and so we put this on last. It's last on the council for a reason. Um, we got an opportunity, however. Uh, to uh, have a local uh, uh, Republic Ford had a <laughs> Ford utility, same as we've been ordering in previous years, on, in stock on the lot um, and at uh, below the state bid price. Um, so we decided to move quickly. I will admit to you, we do not have all the answers for you. The insurance claim has not been finalized yet, so we don't have, we do not know what we will be getting on that 2016. Ford Explorer had, had 23,000 miles when it was uh, totaled, um, but my anticipation is at least over 20,000. I'm hoping, I'm sure it's going to be over 20,000. My intent here, we, we need to have patrol vehicles. That's critical to our operation. So uh, my intent is to uh, get approval tonight from the council to move forward on the purchase of this in-stock vehicle. It's on site now. We will work with the insurance company and whatever the difference between the insurance company payoff and the cost of the vehicle which was $27,801, uh, uh, we will make up in our either general fund budget or through our reserve account. Uh, in addition, just so it's clear, we will be moving equipment from the old crashed vehicle, taking it out, a labor cost to remove it from that vehicle, and then a labor cost to install it, but I don't anticipate any significant increases in new equipment to do that. There may be a few minor pieces that got damaged in the collision. So I'm anticipating the entire cost to be under or at or below $31,000. Uh, 
Um, obviously, I don't have the exact numbers for you here tonight because the insurance company hasn't finalized the uh, payoff yet. <coughs> but I'll happily answer any questions. Council, any questions for Chief Walker? Councilman herself. All right. Uh, you did a good job. Um, uh -oh. I will say, have, uh -oh. have, you, have, you been have you been handling the claim? All right. Like, have you? Have no, you I don't. I do not handle the claim. No. Okay. But I, I, if I can answer, I do have. Uh, we did go out uh, and get estimates on it, um, and so we went out three, and we only got two back. Um, and I'll be honest with you, they they varied between. Uh, there was one just under ten thousand, and the other one was about sixteen over sixteen thousand. And so we went back to the ten thousand one, thinking, wow. And unfortunately, they failed to include some heavy-duty items like airbags, like an entire airbag system in the car was gone. Um, so they didn't include so that in their so bid. So it may not be total. Uh, it was. So after all of that, we went through that. The uh, insurance company actually sent an adjuster out to look at it and make the determination whether to total it or not. Okay. And they have made that determination. So sometimes there are some provisions that allow you to get a new car replacement, being that it was a 16, right? 2016. The problem is I think the mileage may be too much, um, but that's, some, that's a question worth asking. So. I, we have our finest on that. Okay. Connie Moeller with the, uh, <laughs> with the city. Uh, and and I, trust me, she's probably tired of hearing from me because I call her every day and send her an email every day about it uh, to try and get this thing nailed down because we wanted to take advantage of the opportunity of an on-site vehicle. The alternative would be to wait, order one, and it could be three or four months out. Do we ensure that additional equipment on there, or is that just? That, that I've talked with Connie about that. So no, the claim is for the value of the vehicle. Um, to be frank with you, there's no. I don't know that there's a reason to. to uh, I guess if the equipment was damaged, we might ar uh, argue that point. But most of the equipment's interior, and other than there may be some damage to a siren that's mounted in the front end where the collision occurred. Um, uh, but I'm not. That's the least of my sure, worries. Sure. So um, we insure it for the 27,000, 26, 27,000. I just wouldn't want insult to injury, 27 plus 8. You know, uh, or, you know, so. No, because, I mean, to be frank with you, the equipment can be used. There is a labor cost to take it out. Now, we just put it in last year, last summer. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, I wish it was one of our older cars, but it wasn't. So that's the reality of our business. Thank you, Council Member Self. Any other questions? <coughs> Council Member Jones? Is this the appropriate place to ask kind of what the circumstances were surrounding the chase? Uh, yeah, I, I think you can ask yeah. that now. Yeah, I'm happy to answer. It was a uh, it was a vehicle pursuit on just a regular vehicle stop here in, in Republic out on uh, O'Neill in Kansas, um, and the person decided they didn't want to be stopped, uh, and were pursued all the way through Springfield, through town of Springfield or city of Springfield streets multiple times attempts to spike strip to, to get the vehicle to stop and they avoided that. Uh, turns out the person was wanted by alcohol, tobacco and firearms for federal violations, a major criminal um, and we were able to, to, with the assistance of Springfield and Greene County, actually make the arrest at the location of the collision. That, is, that was out at I-44 I in Glenstone. <laughs> so it, actually I got an email from the uh, alcohol and tobacco firearms uh, um, special agent in charge here in Springfield that they had been looking for this person for a long while. We weren't looking for him. We were just making a vehicle stop and happened to be there. It was a stolen, by the way, it was a stolen vehicle too. I forgot to mention that. They didn't have insurance. No, no. Yeah, this was, yeah, no, this was, uh, that's why I don't like being in front of you on this topic. This is not one that, you know, I like coming back to the council and saying, sorry, we wrecked a 2016 car. Um, I, you know, I mean, we've reviewed internally the, the collision. Um, certainly there's some um, procedures in terms of distance from cars and things that we can learn from the incident. But uh, I'll be real frank with you. The, the way the vehicle spun out off-road and uh, turned around and literally spun and came at our vehicle, so we hit head-on. It was a unique circumstance. Thank you. Jones, any other questions for Chief Watt? Other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Before we get on with the finance report, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank council. Um, I do want to appreciate everything you guys do. You all bring a unique perspective to council. Um, and I just appreciate everything you guys do. So I just want to let, let you guys know that. Um, so, Brandon Felt, 
show that today with, with the insurance knowledge and uh, Charlie bringing a lot of stuff too and, and, and uh, Mrs. Poole and, and Mr. Wilson, you've got your fingers on the pulse of the public. So I appreciate you guys and Mr. Jones, your business sense. I appreciate that too. So thank you guys for uh, serving on council. On to the financial report. Mr. Brown. Good evening. I believe uh, everyone's received uh, three particular reports that I've provided for the board. Uh, I apologize for my voice, but the weather changed yesterday. My voice didn't. <laughs> so it's uh, not keeping up with the weather. Uh, what you have uh, uh, that I've provided you is basically the cash and investment report as of January 31st, 2017. Uh, because of me coming in as the interim finance director, uh, we were a little slow on some of these things. We did. We have got January out. We're almost finished with with February, uh, so uh, you should be up to, to having current financial statements fairly quickly. Uh, cash and investment report. There's also a budget and actual report, which is about 60 or 70 pages long. Uh, I'm sure you've read every every one of the pages, but uh, if there are any questions or items in there that you'd like to to go through or or talk about, I'd be glad to. I've also uh, provided you with a sales tax schedule. Uh, you had been provided a sales tax schedule in the past, which basically was provided having the current month reported to you being the one that was for the period a month or two ago. Uh, as far as sales tax is concerned, the business pays it one month to the state, the state gets it the next month, and then the following month they turn around and remit it to you. So you've got a three-month spread as far as sales tax. Some of that gets a little confusing as far as what you're talking about and what you're comparing things to. Uh, I like to do apples to apples and oranges to oranges, so to speak, and so I went ahead and redid the schedule where it is only on collections. It basically shows you what you collected last year, uh, same, same date as far as 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, so that you have a, a good comparison of exactly what was collected in your month. And uh, so it's a little different than the schedule maybe that you've seen before. <laughs> So I'd briefly like to go over those three schedules that, that I did provide for you. Uh, the first one would be the cash and investment schedule. Uh, to highlight it, uh, basically your uh, cash and investments as of January 31st, 2017, total $12.5 million. Now that sounds like a lot of money, uh, but you have to remember that really a lot of that money is tied up in other issues. Uh, of that uh, uh, $12.5 million, you have $3.7 million that's specific uh, for the funds uh, that you have as far as street fund, water and sewer, uh, fire, things like that. You've got another 3.5 million that's really designated. The board has decided that they wanted to set aside certain dollars for capital improvements or equipment or whatever. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, total 3.6 million that's really restricted by law or ordinance that can't be touched because of your bonds or utility deposits that's not spendable cash. So overall, you've got only about 1.8 million of that 12 point million that you can use. And that's really for the general fund operations. Uh, having a budget of around $7.4 million in the general fund as far as your budget for the expenses this year, uh, your 1.8 million would only take you about three and a half, four months. So it's a good 24, 25% fund balance. Uh, you wouldn't want to get a lot lower than that. So you're, you're in good shape, but you're not, you know, as far as going out and doing a lot of major projects, that, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, it's not a good time for that. Uh, the, did you have a question? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. So just was you here for the, for Jared's discussion regarding the, the, the finance, the sales tax? No. Okay, so that would coincide with that discussion with, the availability of the 1.8 million. If someone was to ask, can we use that money to fund those other projects? That comment that would just help solidify what Jared presented to us in our in our in our work session. So I just want to draw attention to that that all those projects we're talking about that 1.8 million would generate is, is needed for our operating cash. That's Thank correct. you. Thank That's you. Uh, I do think that there was uh, an effort to go and. and reevaluate those board designated accounts to see exactly what those were. Some of those have been around for quite a while. And uh, but, uh, like I said, if you've, got, if you've got all your other assets that are tied up that, that really can't be used for operations, that, uh, that limits what you can do. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, 
sales tax uh, report uh, that uh, we talked about just a little bit ago. I would like to say that as far as the dollars received, we already know what January, February, March are. I only presented you a financial statement for January, but if I take the three months of sales tax, which I've got the bank statement so I can tell you what you collected, uh, you collected $1.4 million in sales tax for the first quarter of 2017. As far as comparing that to the prior years, that's about 0.6, about half a percent more than you received a year ago, which is good. Any, any improvement in sales tax is great. Uh, so uh, really $1.4 million received there. And uh, as far as the budget for 2017, that quarter you received about 25%. So you're right in line with what you had budgeted as far as sale, sales tax for, for this year. Councilman Marcel. Uh, question. Like I see in January that we have an increase of like 39%, but then in March we have a swing of a negative 25, almost 26%. Anything attribute to why here <laughs> you, and then you can you can look like back market. you can look at 2016 and see the same thing. It's really a matter of just when the money gets paid to the state and when the state gives it to you. Okay. It was good to see. Uh, uh, yes, we had a large increase there, but then you saw. I, you know, I went to the the city administrator and, and, and the assistant administrator and said, "Look at this decrease you had in, in the third month." But when we went back through. 2014, 15, 16, and 17, it really was consistent. You're really close. It's just a matter of when the state gets the money and when they send it to you. So having a 0.6 increase was great considering the big decrease that we, we had uh, in March. Any questions for Mr. Brown? On the financial report? I, I would like one other thing. Certainly. I believe this is my last board meeting with you <laughs> because I think they found my replacement. So anyway, I, I want to thank you for allowing me to serve the city. Uh, I have a wonderful you know, time the last, last two months uh, going through and, and, and working here. You've got a really wonderful group of, of people. You've got some talented professionals here. Uh, I really like the way that uh, you're moving forward. I like the things that I've, I've been in several of the EM meetings uh, with the uh, department heads and with uh, the city administrator and system administrator and I think it's really good. It's a really good positive move and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the changes that are going to come about. I live close here and I'll be watching so thank you very much. And thank you Mr. Brown. I, I, can, I can test this. I come in here during the day Mr. Brown's over there. He's, he's working diligently the way. I wave at him. He's like so we appreciate your dedication and, and your service to the city sir. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, with that, I need a um, motion and second on the financial report to accept. Motion. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? And that motion carries 6 0. On the reports from staff, I'm going to start this time with Mr. Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Larry, I appreciate your work. I think that you came in, I think, one. Uh, Jared did an outstanding job of researching and looking and, and, and vetting and looking for someone to come in and do this work, and I think we absolutely hit a home run with the work that you've done. I would say that it might be your last meeting more than so because I, I look forward to you continuing to work and assist us, assisting with the transition with the new uh, finance director, but I do appreciate the work that you provided and the, work, and, and the links that you go to to explain it because when I saw the first sales tax number, of that decline, I about fell out of my chair. But going back and looking at it, uh, I appreciate the work that that you provided. It is it is very extensive. Cleaning that up and explaining, I think that's been one of the the issues that I wanted this council to see was the more understandable numbers that you could see how the money could and could not be used. When you look down there and see 12.5, 12.6 million dollars, does not mean that's money to go out and be spent or pledged to build other projects. And so uh, I appreciate the work and all the all the time you put in and resources you provided us and answers you provided us. So thank you, but I still anticipate that we'll be calling on you for the transitional phase. Um, with that, Debbie Parks, as we've mentioned, has been hired to be our new finance director. She'll be coming to us from uh, OTO, um, and uh, I look forward to her starting uh, next Monday, March 27th. But again, I look forward to, with the transition, working that in and working with Larry and understanding the, the, the financial position and how we operate and trying to get some more ideas. And I look forward to her fresh ideas 
as to how to move and make it more communicate our message a little bit more clear long term. Um, and I've added this. April 22nd is a citywide cleanup. We've talked about it a lot tonight. I appreciate uh, the residents speaking on behalf of that issue. I don't care. I don't care how many times we've got to share it on Facebook, whatever, Twitter. Uh, call the news leader, call KY3, KSPR. This is a, I think this is a very big issue and an issue that we need to take a lot of priority for our community because I do think we need to take a lot of pride in what the community looks like. And this is a shot and an opportunity, and I appreciate Republic Services to, to, to participate with us in the first one. But this is not just a ho-hum, let's go do it. Let's, let's get serious about getting out there and helping. If you run into a citizen or an individual that is elderly, cannot get their, their materials, Encourage them to contact the city. We will talk to. We'll, we'll, we'll try to work with our code enforcement, which we do this now with other nonprofits, groups, churches, events that could get up and help people get things to the curb. Uh, it is a community event, and I just I would highly emphasize trying to get the word out. So we'll try to find other mechanisms to do that as well, uh, just to stress the importance of it. But I appreciate the work at least getting that out. But April 22nd, we'll continue to talk about it, discuss it. Uh, Jared, thanks for the work session tonight on the sales tax, and that will be coming up on the next uh, uh, council meeting agenda for, for your consideration. Uh, auditors from KPM were in last week, so that was uh, good to see them in here. They had four folks lined up. It's kind of demented to say, but a little way. It was nice just to see four of them in here working and going to town and pulling receipts and looking at different things that we had going on in the city to, to see a very... Uh, robust attempt and in look into our financials because that I mean like we talked about transparency and the understanding of where our financial position is and I think KPM is going to do an outstanding job. Um, I have an important announcement. David and I met with MoDOT today and uh, to, related to a rail safety study and it's called what was it called at grade uh, crossings in the community. But uh, the study will begin from Republic through Aurora. So basically what they provided us with a chart with the number of accidents and the number of fatalities along that route. Um, and so they're going to be begin to do a study. At, at current, there's only two crossings uh, that are included in the Republic portion of the study, which was West Avenue and O'Neill Road, slash Miller Road. Um, our initial comment, and I appreciate David's participation, which you may be hiding behind the wall, but we need to extend that all the way to MM. And so what they had asked, and they said that they were open to extending that study to MM, or yeah, to MM, looking at a potential overpass. OTO was looking at an over, a potential overpass at MM. And so the other thing we addressed was if, if you're interested in the safety of the community and the safety of the crossings, the train speeds are crazy. And so I think that the, the railroad and MoDOT are are taking this pretty serious given the number of events and the, and the, the st statistics they provided us today. So what well, they've also offered and what they're going to do, so on April 11th, we established this today in the meeting, April 11th from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at the community center, MoDOT and the consulting engineers will be conducting a public meeting to receive public comment. So if you know somebody with the school, we'll be contacting the school district because this is something that's very, uh, goes right in between two schools between the schools, the train speeds, uh, increasing the study to go further. Any of those comments that you can add in the public comment, bring up the train speeds. If that's a concern to you, bring up the train speeds because uh, it is a concern. So are you saying the train speeds are a concern? They're crazy. <laughs> what time is this meeting? It's from 6 to 8. They're, they're just they're fast. They're erratic. They're, they're slow or fast. Are they either stop or they're... But, Everything that you can bring up from the noise, uh, when they sound, they, they ask us to bring up all of it. So, um, but, you know, come out to that meeting. It, or if not, put your, your comments in writing. We can submit those. We'll find you. We have the web address or the email address. We can submit the, the, uh, the comments in writing. But that's an important meeting for our community because they are looking at what to do with those crossings. And it could include closing crossings. So it's important that you get out and communicate your concerns, what you could see. So, again, April 11th, 6 to 8, Community Center. And, uh... Brandon, can you send that out to council again? Thank you. That's OTO. And we'll put that out on the, uh... We'll, we'll do a press release on that as well. And, uh, no, it's MoDOT. MoDOT. Okay. We'll do a press release on that as well. We'll also put that on our social media account. <coughs> 
and associated with that will be a traffic count. So when you see those little black cables around town, Check again, down. drive over them as fast as you can, as many times as you can. Um, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> uh, the MoDOT would like to include bus routes and uh, all of our predominant public safety routes. So in those, uh, at least those two routes, so we need to talk to uh, the Brookline Fire District and what are you talking about? I want that sign moved downtown. I think it tells how fast. So probably takes a picture too. So, but anyway, the, the the public safety routes need to be established from both our fire, police, and I know because uh, Brookline has a fire district. It's important that we engage them because they may use those same routes and and, and discuss that with them, how that's affected. So we'll we'll be inviting a number of members to go out to that public meeting, and. Uh, I know my daughter's not watching, but I'm, I've got a commender. They just played in the national tournament in Billings, Montana. And today's her birthday, so I want to say happy birthday to my daughter. And congratulations <laughs> to a great season, even though she's not watching. But she better be watching. So. That's all I have. And, and Chief, that uh, the mobile unit does not take pictures. That's correct, right? Only in your car, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Derrickson. No, sir. Tough act to follow, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. When are you going to announce the time that they'll be doing that? <coughs> I'm sorry. On this uh, trash thing, when will they decide what hours that they'll be traveling the streets picking up? It's in the, in the flyer. It'll be in the flyer. It'll be on. It'll be established by the time. It'll be their normal trash pickup day, and it'll be the time that their trash is normally being picked up. Saturday just a Saturday. See, then I missed it completely. See, I need to read the newsletter, which I haven't seen a copy of. It, it says the 22nd. Seven Saturdays. And that's Thanks. A, that's a Saturday. I don't know what day it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. But there's no, citizens must no have their time, simple no items and terms no later than 7 a.m. the morning of Saturday, the 22nd of April, for pickup. I wouldn't provide that. Well, I don't have that. It should be in your packet. Yeah. Under well, Exhibit L, the very last page under Exhibit L. I guess I'll have to relook my packet. Okay. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not by myself. Thank you. Very good. That. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> On to future community events. Miss Mayfield. Jared Hyde. Jared Hyde. What are you doing back here, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> Future community events. Uh, March 23rd, 28th, and 30th, Arthritis Foundation Exercise Program. That's on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. Uh, March 24th through April 7th, Tot Academy, Fridays, 9.30 a.m. or 10.45 a.m. March 27th, Toddler Open Gym. That's held on Mondays at 9 a.m. March 29th through May 3rd, Senior Wee Bowling uh, on Wednesdays. March 30th is our senior movie day at 3 p.m. The movie uh, for March is Sully. April 7th, last day to register for Youth Boys Baseball. That's ages 5 to 12. April 7th also, last day to register for Youth Girls Softball, ages 5 to 14. And April 7th, last day to register for our Toddler Top Ball, ages 3 and 4. And then not on here, but Saturday, April 8th, will be our annual Easter egg hunt um, at J.R. Martin Park. It starts at 10 a.m. And then Friday, April 21st, is opening night at the AMP for our fourth season. Activities will begin at 7 p.m. We have uh, local magician Josh Farley coming out. He's doing a 45-minute uh, magic show, and then we will have Aladdin following that. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Mayfield. No executive session for me? I don't think. No executive session? Not this time. No executive session, so I will entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries 6 to 0. Thank you, Council, for being here. Thank you, audience, for being here. And please don't leave, Council. We have to have, have to sign something for Mr. Lawton, Chief Lawton. Hmm?